I'm Steve Marshall, artist and pastor on staff at Willowbrook United Methodist Church, and I want to share with you a message about how God can use you to do great things. And I'm sure your first thought is probably, oh no, not me. I'm not special. I don't have what it takes to do anything great. But God has different ideas about your abilities and can use you in ways you never thought possible, if you just trust him. Let's look at the story of Moses, a man who became a hero of the faith, despite his reluctance. Moses ranks, along with Abraham and David, as one of the truly great men of the Old Testament. His shadow lies over 1,500 years of Hebrew history. His influence is felt in our courts of justice in the Western world to this day. Now, whether you think of Moses as the liberator or Moses as the lawgiver or Moses as a leader, you are confronted with a man whose greatness seems almost superhuman. But actually, Moses was very human, as we shall see. The path to greatness begins for Moses when he encounters a burning bush in the desert. Now Moses has had to flee Egypt after killing a man. He has no intention of ever going back. But God has a different plan for Moses. And how Moses responds offers each of us hope that God can also do great things through us. God's plan for Moses begins to unfold one day while Moses is out in the desert tending sheep. And he sees a strange sight, a bush that is aflame, but is not consumed by the fire. As he comes closer, he hears a voice tell him to take off his shoes, for he is on holy ground. Then God speaks to Moses. He tells him that he has heard the cries of his people held in slavery in Egypt and will give them a new land flowing with milk and honey. And God is going to send Moses to Pharaoh to demand that he let his people go. Wow, what an honor to be used by God to lead his people out of slavery into the promised land. How wonderful. But we are surprised when Moses responds to God by saying, You've got the wrong guy. I can't do that. So God encourages Moses, saying, I'll be with you. But Moses isn't swayed. He says, if I go to the people and tell them that the God of their ancestors has sent me, and they ask me, which God, what shall I say? And here God gives Moses his name. Tell them, I am has sent me. Yes, tell them, Jehovah, the God of your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has sent me to you. And then God tells Moses his plan. Call the elders together and then go to the king of Egypt. Tell him to let your people go. Now, I know that Pharaoh won't allow this without some pressure, so I will send a series of plagues to destroy Egypt so that Pharaoh will be forced to let you go. God has laid out his plan, showing Moses exactly how it will all work out. And what does Moses say? They won't believe me. They won't do what I tell them to. They'll say, Jehovah never appeared to you. Now God sees that he still has some convincing to do. So he has Moses turn a stick into a snake and turn his hand leprous and then healed. God says, show the elders these signs, and they will believe you, God says. Now, Moses is getting desperate. He pleads with God. Oh, Lord, I just am not a good speaker. I never have been, and I am not now, even after you have spoken to me, for I have a speech impediment. Who makes mouths, God asked him. Isn't it I, the Lord? Who makes a man so that he can speak or not speak, see or not see, hear or not hear? 
Now go ahead and do as I tell you, for I will help you to speak, and I will tell you what to say. But Moses said, Lord, please send someone else. Now I would wager that this is not the kind of story you would expect to find of Israel's greatest hero. Heroes rise up to the challenges. Real heroes show courage and resolve and self-sacrifice. Moses doesn't sound like a typical hero. In his fear, he keeps coming up with excuse after excuse. Please, God, not me. Nobody will listen to me. I can't speak well. I stutter. I can't do this, God. Send someone else. Send someone better qualified. Just don't send me. I call Moses the reluctant rescuer. He doesn't want any part of God's plan to save his people. Even though God has promised to be with him, he is afraid of failure. Even though God will be with him, he thinks it all falls on him. And he knows he can't do it. He just doesn't have what it takes. Well, how many of us are like Moses? How many of us have said no to God through our many excuses? I'm too young. I'm too old. I don't know what to say. I don't have the time. I'm not good enough. Please, Lord, ask someone else. You know the excuses, don't you? And you know we all feel inadequate to the task. We all feel like someone else could do it better. But hear this. God is not looking for ability. God is looking for availability. Like Moses, when God calls us to undertake a task, God promises to be with us. And not only that, God promises to give us everything we need to be successful in God's eyes. God is not looking for ability. God is looking for availability. Well, Moses has run out of excuses, and God has become angry. He tells Moses, all right, I'll concede that you are not a good speaker, but I'm not letting you off the hook. Your brother Aaron is a good speaker. I will give you the words to say, and he will say them for you. Now go. And so Moses went back to Egypt. The rest of the story may be familiar to you. Pharaoh resisted Moses' demands. God sent ten plagues. And finally, the Israelites were allowed to leave. As they journeyed to the Red Sea, Pharaoh had a change of heart and sent his army to wipe them out. But God was with Moses. When they encountered the waters, God told Moses to hold up his rod and draw back the waters so that the people could travel through on dry ground. This is the dramatic scene made popular by Hollywood and provides us our mental image of a triumphant Moses. Moses, the reluctant rescuer. His excuses didn't deter God in using him to fulfill God's plan. And so it is with us. Are our excuses a matter of I can't or I won't? God has a plan and he is inviting you to be part of it. He's not counting on your ability, just your availability. Listen for God's still small voice. And when God calls, say yes. And let the adventure begin. Amen. <laughs>